It was my near-death experience. I'm lucky to be alive, blessed to be alive today. And hunter safety is something that is really important. And the moment that you stray away from any of those safe practices is the moment something bad can happen to you guys. What's up y'all? This is Adrian, AKA Styles with Ace or on YouTube, Ace Adventures. If you're still rocking with me, I appreciate you. I know I just started my page last year. Things are moving along, trying to get a, uh, a schedule of getting all these videos out for you guys. So everything's been smooth selling so far. So I appreciate you. If you haven't, feel free to check out all of my other videos that I've already posted on this page. I'll be posting my hunts, any riding I do on my dirt bike or any outdoor trips that we take, me and my wife or just me and my boys. A lot of different content on this page related to my outdoor adventures, hence Ace Adventures. First off, before I get this video really started, I want to give a quick shout out to my Whiskey Dixie family. So they actually gifted me these hats a few weeks ago. This is the Wood Duck hat. Uh, there's another Wood Duck hat. And I also have on a deer hat as well. So shout out to those guys. I really appreciate y'all. And I'm absolutely loving these hats. I get asked about them every time I wear them. They do have a few more that you guys can check out on their website at whiskeydixie.com. And you'll be able to find more hats like this. And all of this, you'll see the emblem here is real wood. Some pretty cool stuff with these hats. And uh, again, I believe you can actually customize your own hat as well. So reach out to them, check out their website and see what else they have for you guys. So if you've seen my video back Back on December 19th, uh, in my opinion, it ended a little abruptly. I wouldn't have ended the video like that, but that's simply because I had a huge turn of events for me after that hunt. It was my first time shooting some wood ducks, so it was a pretty good day for me <laughs> overall, I guess, now that I'm still alive. But as the title for this video says, it was my near-death experience. I'm lucky to be alive, blessed to be alive today, and I just want to say that hunter safety is something that is really important, and the moment that you stray away from any of those safe practices is the moment something bad can happen to you guys. So if anything you've learned in those classes or anything you've learned from your buddies or from your parents, grandparents, all that stuff, make sure you always incorporate that into your daily hunting or anytime you do a hunting outing, because if not, it could cost you your life. With that being said, I'll just kind of dive into everything that happened to me that day. I was, of course, I was by myself. So I was kayaking back to, I guess, just up the river just to get back. And uh, after I had shot my last wood ducks, I thought I'd put my safety back back on but I did it for some odd reason and I didn't check and I still for some odd reason while I was in the kayak I had one in the chamber still with my safety off so that right there is an immediate no or immediate red flag when it comes to hunter safety as I'm paddling back up the river getting back to the truck I hear some geese flying over top and I try to grab my gun while looking up and the moment I grabbed my gun I evidently placed my hand on the trigger as soon as I did that the gun shoots a hole through the bottom of the kayak going through the top of the kayak and the bottom of the kayak and the gun flies off into the water my immediate thought is I just lost that $1,100 gun so I'm thinking in my mind like how I can get this Frankie back up out, out the water at that time and once I realized that it was just steady sinking I was like okay that, that's a goner so now I just got to get back make sure everything's okay uh, make sure I'm okay so I'm just trying to paddle back upstream and as I'm paddling upstream I noticed the kayak is kind of rocking a little weird and I look down and I noticed that there's a hole in the kayak probably this big around. The reason I say I'm blessed is one, because I'm still alive here today, like I've already mentioned, but there's also the hole that was in the kayak was literally right beside the footrest in the kayak. By some grace of God, I didn't shoot my own uh, myself in the foot. Thankful that I still have both feet with no pellets or no holes in them right now. But as I'm steady paddling upstream, I'm thinking to myself, okay, I gotta get back as fast as I can because I'm still kind of in the in the middle of this river and the river is probably, uh, let's say maybe 40, yards wide, maybe where, where I was, maybe a little less than that. As I'm paddling upstream, I'm trying to get closer to land. I'm trying to keep the kayak steady because like I said, it's kind of rocking back and forth on me a little bit because there's water just steadily filling up this kayak. So once that happens, I get probably halfway to where I needed to get and then the kayak just flips on me. At this time, I have my waders on, I have the decoys on the, on the kayak, uh, my gun is gone. I have literally, I have a crate full of additional shells, gloves, everything 
everything. My book bag is in there, my GoPros, everything is in this kayak with me. My phone is in my waders, luckily. So I always put my phone in my waders or in my jacket whenever I'm out duck hunting. So I was able to, as soon as the kayak flipped on me, my first thought was I gotta get these waders off because initially my immediate thought was I can't die in these waders because you hear about a bunch of crazy stories about guys dying in their waders every year. I feel like it's been getting more uh, more publicity. That was the scariest thought in my mind. I was able to get my waders off and once that happened, I got my waders off and I'm kind of floating it on my back and thank God I can swim. I was holding on to the kayak still because they kind of flipped over on me like I said and it was just like I'm able to hold on to the back of the kayak at this point. So I take off the waders, push them down, they're floating down the river and I have on this huge waterproof insulated duck hunting, I guess, vest if you were a sweater or a pullover. So that is super heavy. I've got on some thick pants. I've got on two pair of socks. I think I had on two shirts, two long sleeve shirts under the pullover that I had on. So at that time, I had a lot of clothes on. So I'm still holding on to the back of the kayak and the kayak's starting to sink. So I'm trying to paddle, but nothing's working for me. So I push off of the kayak and there's some trees off to my right side. So I kind of swim off to the trees. The first tree I grab onto, like I'm trying to calm myself down and not panic. While I'm doing that, I'm trying to wrap my arms around this tree and I'm just steady slipping, steady slipping. So for me, I'm like, okay, I got to find another tree. I got to find another tree. So I look to my left and there's a few other trees beside me. So I'm able to push off of that tree that I'm on or trying to get on and grab onto another smaller tree. And at that point, uh, I have my phone in my mouth. Like, uh, I don't know if you'll be able to see it here, but be a little blurry, but if you can see that on my phone, there is literally bite marks from where I was <laughs> trying to keep my phone above water. So I'm swimming through the water like this. Like I said, my screen is cracked now. I'm just really just trying to stay alive at this point. So I'm just holding on to different trees. I get to the point where I can, I see there's a log maybe five yards from where I am now. I'm swimming through the water and I get to this log and at that log, I'm able to take off my, I'm able to sit on top of the log, take off as much clothes as I can. So I was able to take off that pullover, an additional shirt, take off all, any extra weight that I had on, extra socks, took that stuff off. And I was able to call my wife and my buddy Davey, and, uh, who's also my wife co-worker so this was uh, maybe five minutes from their job thank god and i called both of them they were able to communicate and get uh get out there to where i was or davy was able to get out to where i was with uh the, the help of another co-worker of my wife so another good friend of ours allison so both of them came to uh, my rescue <laughs> i love you guys <laughs> so going through that so once i give them a call they're both rushing there trying to get to where i am my wife's at home with our son so i'm trying to figure out all this stuff all these different thoughts are going through my mind. My next thought is I got to get out of this water because it's 30 degrees outside. Try not to be, uh, get hypothermia. So I'm trying to swim through this water and my clothes are so heavy at this point and my hands are starting to turn red or purple and my body is just trying to like, it's in shock. You know, I'm trying to just stay alive at this point. So I'm pushing myself in between trees, back and forth, back and forth. As I'm swimming through this water, man, and like I said, the, the water is it's freezing. So my body, as I'm going through and I don't know if you have if I have any former athletes watching this video as I'm swimming through the water I can feel my leg cramping up just because I felt like I was in an ice bath trying to swim so imagine you're in an ice bath for a few minutes and you're trying to swim in that ice bath so that's how I felt now, I ended up getting to some more trees you know like I said just pushing back and forth At some points there were like maybe 10 yards in between the trees that I was trying to push through so I'm literally swimming through dunking under the water because I'm trying to stay above the water and my clothes are getting heavy again and I'm able to grab onto some additional trees and probably about maybe 10 minutes later or so I can hear Davey and Allison through the trees or through the woods sitting on land which is probably at this point still 40 yards or so from me they're trying to make sure that I'm still alive still pushing and it gets so cold I mean it, it's to the point to where I can hardly talk so I'm just yelling at them every now and then just letting them know I'm still alive and just still pushing it through the water I get to the point to where I'm maybe 10 or 15 yards away from where they're standing on the land and they both yell out to me and asked me if I'm okay and they said the look that I had in my face was like okay I'm not gonna make it and at that point in my mind I was thinking that I don't know how the hell I'm gonna make it out of this water I'm like trying not to freak out again starting to think about all the possible outcomes if I don't make it out the water thinking about how long it's gonna take me before I am officially in that hypothermia range or time frame and uh, at that point I look at them Davey takes off all his clothes and dives in this water as it's 30 degrees outside 
God swims to me because I can't even talk at this point. I can't talk and he swims to me, pulls me, swims, helps me swim, pulls me to the shore. The moment we get out the water, thank God for a hunter's instinct. So his immediate thought was, all right, he needs to get out of these clothes. So they took off as many of the clothes as they could and wrapped me around with blankets and my feet were frozen, my hands were frozen. Uh, so they're wrapping me with blankets and I can't even stand. So they're like holding me up and walking me through to the truck. One funny thing about this, I mean, I can laugh about this now because I'm alive, <laughs> but as he was pulling me out the water, I'm yelling, ducks, ducks, get the ducks. <laughs> so after I talked to them, they're like, man, we thought you were going crazy. But I'm like, no, because as I was swimming through the, the water and swimming from tree to tree, I saw the duck floating beside me. I grabbed the ducks. I'm like, man, if I'm, go if I'm gonna make it out of this, these ducks are gonna go with me. So I ended up getting out of there and the ducks ended up laying right right on, I guess, against the land where we uh, where I got pulled out of. But once I got out of there, they put me in the truck and pretty much I just sat in the truck and thawed out. And man, just, I mean, the moment they pulled me out of the water, man, it was like, I almost cried because I literally was in a near death experience. I'd never had been in something that close to death. And for me, it was just like a wake up call. So I had to get my kayak repaired now because there's a hole in the top and the bottom and probably some pellets still floating around in there. Yeah, anytime I go out, I'm never duck hunting alone, at least not anytime soon. And if I do duck hunting and I'm in a kayak, I'm taking a life jacket with me. Uh, I just bought a dry bag that can also be used as a flotation device. So I have that now. Taking some extra precautions whenever I'm going out there now and just making sure that everyone knows where I am and what time, what, again, just all those details, man. It's gonna be super important. All this stuff is 100% on my behalf. <laughs> so if I would have followed my own uh, safety guidelines that I normally take, none of this would have happened. I'm here to say that I'm still alive. I'm able to talk about this experience. So I just wanna make sure that you guys understand what not to do. And as you can tell from my, I guess one of my older videos, I'm having a hard time with, with kayaks and duck hunting. So maybe I should avoid kayak and look towards a, a John boat or something, but we'll see. We'll see what next year brings. But for the rest of this year, I don't think I'll be using the kayak because I have to get my repaired. So I just wanna make sure that you guys are aware of what you need to do whenever you're duck hunting by yourself or in a kayak or on some water. And also take into consideration some of the factors that may have happened previously or into the days leading up to that hunt. So we actually had a, just like a massive downpour of rain earlier that week. So the river was maybe 10 to 11 feet higher than it typically is. Current was pretty strong. So all of that stuff played a, a big role or a big factor into that specific day. So hopefully nothing like this ever happens to you. If you are in a situation like this, make sure that you don't panic, stay calm and just think about how you need to get out of the situation you're in <laughs> and put all this stuff into action or into consideration and don't do like I did, but I'm alive and well, so I can joke about it. All my family can give me crap about it now. That day, it was a pretty rough day. Glad to be alive. You guys will be seeing more content from me coming soon. I've been working on a lot of different hunts and been going on a lot of bunch of uh, duck hunting excursions, if you will, or duck hunting adventures with my boys, Frank and Jeremy lately. A lot more content to come, but if you're still here, I appreciate you. And um, again, stay safe out there. Adrian out.